Hello everybody. So this is a video I had planned to make for quite a while. It's a more concise guide on how to build the Mochi 40. I'll go over both of the soldered version and the hot swap version that I have here. Uh, just going over all of the different parts and things that you'll need to know. So let me put this to the side and we'll first start off with the soldered version. I'm starting off with the soldered version because it's the one that's slightly more complicated and then we'll just get to the parts that matter for the odd swap version that matter for the solder as well. So here's the solder PCB. This one is going to look a bit different from the one that you're getting, going to get because this logo is going to be shrunk and this logo is going to be made bigger. <sighs> On the back here is where we'll be mainly focusing. This is where the difference really resides between the soldered and the hot swap. The soldered version does not have pre-soldered diodes. You will get a small package. The package will look like this, filled with more than enough diodes that you need to build if you are using a soldered PCB. Diodes look like this, fairly simple. Uh, noteworthy is that there is a black line on the diode. You want always that black line to be going towards the square hole. Thankfully, in every situation except for one very notable outlier, the square is always going to be facing towards you if you've got the PCB in the orientation that you would have when typing. Or if you're holding it up, it's going down. Anyway, the square is always going to be in the same direction. The only difference, the only reason that that won't be the case is for the rotary encoder, but just for that, remember that the square matches to the black line. Just make sure you're consistent. Technically speaking, you could fix this problem in code if you were to put it all the other way, but just for the safety, safety and the sake of it, just all of the diodes facing the same direction, black line to the square hole. Now to actually put these in, what you do is you take it and you just bend and bend and you'll get used to the exact spacing on those bends that you need and then you place the diode through the two holes on the clearly marked spots and you just push it through so what I typically recommend is getting something small for both sides of the PCB so you can prop it up like I have here and then the diodes can rest easily in there. Then you'd bend however many you want to and place them in, and then you need to solder them. In order to solder them, you can see here that, well, if you do that bending perfectly, they'll kind of just fall out. My recommendation is to take some form of thin tape. Here I've got painter's tape. And tape over the back side, just pressing down to make sure that the diode stays in place, and then flipping it over to solder. For the sake of it, I will show soldering of this single one. So I've got here my TS-80P, of course, you can do this with any soldering iron, and I've got some Kester solder wire. This is a flux cord wire. Uh, if you do not have a uh, flux core, you will need to apply a little bit of flux to the pads. So you just tap the intersection between the pad and the uh, wire, I guess, and then melt the solder to it, melt a bit, and you're done. Melt a bit of solder. After heating it up, remove the solder, hold it for a bit longer, pull off, and you're good. Easy as that, you just have to repeat that many times. Now, one noteworthy thing, as you can obviously tell, that won't fit in... Like you're going to put switches there. The switches will interfere. What the heck? Just get a pair of cutters of any sort. Uh, you'll probably have something like this lying around. Scissors will even do. It's not that hard. And just chop those off. The diodes are placed in a position that makes sure that even if you don't chop those off too well, you will be able to put switches in and have no interference. So don't worry. So that pretty much sums up the difference between the solder PCB and the hot swap PCB. Well, the other difference being that for the solder PCB, you actually have to solder in the switches. But I think 
that many people... Well, there are enough people that have done tutorials on that. You put the switch in. Well, with this one, you put the switch into the plate first, which is fairly easy to orient. The rounded corners go to the rounded edge, flat corners to the flat edge. And then I swear I have a switch on this table somewhere. Ah, there we go. You just put some switches in. Use these as grounding, or not grounding, as uh, positioning switches like that. And then just put it in and you can solder them. You can, what I typically end up doing is I solder it once I have some of my core ones in. So I'd probably do these two corners as well. I'd solder a single piece or a single pin of each of them. And then after I finish soldering that single pin, so I'm just going to put the solder on that pin. It's pretty typical that the switch is not actually lying flat. In order to prevent this from being a problem, you can pick up the whole thing, press firmly, and then reheat. Then press, continue pressing firmly, release the heat, and then let it cool. And you should be good. That should be nice and flat. And then you can just do that with all of the other pieces. This is something I picked up from uh, Wildcat who also does that. Now, one last, well, actually not one last thing. Let's go over to a hot swap PCB. We have a hot swap PCB here. Uh, hot swap PCB, as would be expected, you can just slide the switches in without the need for a any soldering. You also, of course, will not need to solder the diodes. Those are all pre-soldered on the hot swap PCB. There we go. Make sure you don't bend any pins. Of course, you probably want a plate for a hot swap PCB, but they do hold in there pretty tightly. Now, for both the solder and the hot swap versions, you are going to need to solder the microcontroller the rotary encoder, the switch, and the OLED. Now, one thing I would like to make sure that people don't do is with your rotary encoders, please solder them last. The reason being that if you solder a rotary encoder, like so, let's just place this into place. It uh, can be a little finicky. It's a little tight. It's nice and tight. If you solder that rotary encoder into place first, it's going to be keeping everything on a little bit of a wonky angle. A little frustrating. Recommend avoiding that. For the microcontroller, how I typically end up doing it, here I've got an Elite C and the pins that come with the Elite C. You take the pins, the short pins go through the Elite C. Maple leaf facing up. Oh, I don't know if... Yeah, these are not clean holes. You put the pins through. Like so. This is not very well through because I have a dirty Elite C. Uh, you put them all through. There you go. And then place it in the spot. Oh, God. I really should have paid more attention to what I picked up. Put it in the slot. This way, you can make sure that everything is positioned correctly. Normally, that would sit much more flush. It can't. And once it's in like that, then I flip it over, keep some pressure down on the table, then solder all of these pins, and then flip it over and solder the top so that everything is completely connected. For the nice nano, you can see here that there are pins along pinholes along the back and pins along the back. The nice nano will come with a smaller one of these and has three pins more central in the board. You can see that there are holes for those on here. It's no problem. You just solder it slightly differently. Everything will still work. This is editing Aiden, just giving a little thing that I feel that I missed. With the microcontrollers, you want to make sure that when you solder, the circuitry components that you can visibly see so the little processor on there the button and all of those things are facing towards the pcb 
If you face it the other way, it won't work at all. Uh, if you want to be absolutely sure, there are silk screenings on the PCB, uh, both for the Nice Nano and the Elite C, so that you can match the pins that are labeled on the microcontroller to the pins that you're soldering to the board. Now, after you've soldered the Elite C, or the Nice Nano, your microcontroller of choice, you'll likely want to solder the reset button. The reset button is pretty nice and simple. Just take it and slide it into the slot and then flip it over, hold it down and solder all of those pins. Not difficult at all. Technically, there is a reset button on both the Nice Nano and the Elite C, but you will actually have to put that reset button facing towards the board, making it impossible. That's uh, why you kind of need this reset button, just in case you don't have it hardware mapped, the reset hardware mapped. Something else to note, and while we're at it, is that you want to be sure that you're putting the microcontroller and all of the other components on the right side of the board. It's pretty hard to do, put it on the wrong side with the hot swap version because, well, there are so many hot swap sockets, it's clear you don't want to put it on the side the hot swap sockets are on. But with the solder board, it's a little less easy to notice. Just make sure you're putting it on the right side. Finally, with the uh, with either of the boards, you have the option, uh -huh, this is not sold with the group with the group buy of getting some Milmax low profile hot swap sockets for microcontrollers. This way you could be able to hot swap your microcontroller as I have it set it up here. The thing is you need to use a very particular type of socket. This ultra low profile one as you can get um, I am not sure I will put it on screen right now where you can get it uh, oh no actually do no uh, ringer keys. Ringer Keys is capable, has these for sale. Uh, these are the only ones that will work. Anything with a higher profile than this, and you will not be able to fit everything in the right space. So please do keep that in mind. It causes issues with the OLED. Now, after you've got the microcontroller, switch off of the hot swappable one, the microcontroller soldered in place, uh, the... Uh, in the right orientation as you can see all of the electronics components are facing down then and the reset button in you then need to do the oled i have a oled here i don't know where i put the pins for the oled uh these would come pre these pins would on the oled would come pre-soldered this is from one of my working ones and i would also like to note that the oleds will have a uh, film of a material, it's a spray-on that we're using, just to make sure that there is no interference between the OLED and the pins of the microcontroller. This is an issue that I noticed in development. That's why that piece of tape is there. We've got a better, more permanent solution for the group buy. So you'll take that screen and you'll just slide it on top of the uh, microcontroller into the pins marked for the OLED. Uh, You'll put that in, you'll flip it over, and you will solder. One thing I would like to note is that the pins are just going to poke through because of how uh, narrow that tolerance is. It's fine. You'll be fine. There are just going to be very small pins to solder to. It will work. Don't worry about that. If you're really, really worried about something like that, you can extend the pins with extra pieces of uh, scrap diode if you're really worried. Though I, I really don't think that that's necessary. So that's the microcontroller, the OLED, the reset button. Uh, the last possible thing if you are using the uh, Nice Nano is you might want to attach a uh, JST connector for a battery, the uh, recommended battery that has been set to fit uh, will be listed in many locations. Uh, you might want to attach a JST connector. I don't have any of the JST connectors on hand. I do know for a fact that it will fit. Uh, do not worry about that. Um, you will just attach the JST connector to these pins here. One note about the JST connector is do pay attention to the plus and minus symbols that are 
point uh, put on the PCB, you want to make sure that your battery is matching up with those plus and minus symbols when you plug it in. Uh, if you want to just solder the wires directly, you can do so as well, and that would also uh, desire you to pay attention, close attention to the plus and minus symbols there. Uh, for people who are very unelectronically uh, competent, uh, black goes to minus, red goes to plus. So, after that, that's around when you'd want to solder in your rotary encoder. And you'd solder in your rotary encoder just like you soldered in everything else. After you've soldered everything in as you're going to put the switches in. The I don't have it on hand right now. I still have it coming over from P3D. You will have plate foam that you can put down in between the switches and the plate. You'd put that in, obviously, before you put the switches in. Or as... So you'd lay it down, you put that, and then you'd start doing the switches. And then you'd be done, and you'd be met with a working PCB. Uh, here I have a... Uh, of course, don't forget your uh, stabilizers. It's easy to forget. Uh, here I have an Elite C-based uh, build. It's got the brass plate, and it is using a hot swap... A set of hot swap uh, board. Uh, we can see the Elite C is soldered in nice here. The um, rotary encoder is soldered in. Is soldered in. You don't really need to solder in those mounting pins. Um, the OLED is soldered in, but they're not very much. Po they're not poking through very much. And the reset button is soldered in. And of course, I don't have a JST. So now that you've got all of those things built together, you don't need to have your keycaps on yet or anything. You'll need to place it in the case. You need to put it in the case. Before you do that, you're going to need... Oh boy, do I not have any of these on me? I am a fool. One moment. I thought I had fully repaired for the recording, and clearly I did not. You will have uh, a bag of hardware. It will once again come in a similar bag to these. It will come with some... And it will, of course, always come with more than you need. It will come with some long screws. And it will come with some short screws. The long screws are for mounting in the OLED cover. This one is a smoky black. This will not be part of the group eye, unfortunately. It will be clear. And it will come... And these small ones are for mounting the PC, uh, the actual main mounting points for the PCB. You will also get something I do not have right now, some nuts. I have instead these uh, big wide spacers. Uh, they function the same as the nuts are, so we'll get to those later though. For mounting the PCB, you all you are going to want to have the outside row or columns of keycaps off. And you can see that there are holes for the mounting points. There, 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 and there. You will also be able to put the case foam underneath the case. Underneath the PCB. It'll have all of the spaces for the battery. Do not worry about that. Now, into the mounting process, you will be given a bunch of these silicone O-rings. You have enough for all of the different uh, screw holes. However, you only actually need to put them on these two and these two. You'll put them on that platform like so. This is a 3D printed case. The posts are a little smaller on the non-3D printed one, but it's fine. Uh, they can all rest like that. You'd put that on all four of those. Then you'd take your PCB and just slide it in there. Then finally, you take your screw and you put it into the hole and you tighten it down. That screw there also has an O-ring on it. This gives you a hamburger of your O-rings between the O-rings and the plate and the PCB. This will give you a slightly nicer typing experience. Oh boy. That's pretty much everything. The only thing left now that we've got all of these things in, you've got your PCB completely screwed down, is the screen cover.
you'll get a screen cover like this if you uh, I think I believe that there is no choice you always get one uh, it will be clear it will not be a smoky black that is unfortunately not something I'm capable of providing mainly because I need something slightly thinner than this so that everything doesn't conflict particularly OLED you'll get this with some long screws I've, as I've mentioned before and small nuts not these wide, these long posts that I currently have what you'll do is you'll screw those nuts on just like I've screwed these posts on until it's tight but you can still rotate the screw then you'll put that apparatus that whole thing after you've done it to all four into the four slots and then just screw it down until the screen becomes flush with the edge of the case or however you'd really like it that's how i do it that's what i think is the nicest and it is designed around the intent of doing that then you can put your knob on the rotary encoder get all your keycaps on and type away i think that pretty much covers everything that's all of the different things you'll need to solder your diodes your screws your o-rings your acrylic cover the oled everything should be covered there and hopefully you feel a little bit more confident in assembling it i assure you it is really not hard to assemble this kind of keyboard uh, soldering diodes is not actually too hard it's all just about getting a rhythm going and being confident about it soldering is really all about confidence and i'm sure you can do it of course i managed to forget something as i expected um one last thing this is the unfinished so it hasn't been coded uh, prototype that i just got back uh one thing i would like to point out is that you are also going to get a small square of uh rubber feet you're going to get six uh you will need to take peel off those rubber feet and just place them on the indicated guides there they won't fit perfectly in them but they will fit fairly well in them uh, you just put them on that spot it's good for positioning and you'll be all good then you'll have a better uh, reverberation dampening especially if you put it on a desk mat